This iPad 8th Gen model A2270 was sent to me because it isn't charging properly. This is a super common issue and is endemic across all regular iPad models since the iPad 5. In this video, I'm going to show you how to repair iPad charging issues without replacing the charging port. This one we can see here has 98% charge on it already, which means it must be charging to some degree. But when I plug it in, it's very intermittent and the user described having to have it propped in a certain way just to get it to charge. With iPhones that are stored in people's pockets or bags, it's common to get dust and gunk in the port and it's usually resolved by cleaning it. But I'm yet to see an iPad with the same issues. Instead, the problem lies inside the device, so we have to open it up first to take a look. To open iPad screens without breaking them, I use this big heat plate, a suction cup, and isopropyl alcohol. Since a buddy of mine showed me this technique, I've never looked back. I'll cover this fully in another video, but basically just cook the iPad for 10 minutes at 70 degrees on the hot plate. Then with the iPad still on the hot plate and lifting upwards with the suction cup, work around the screen, lifting it and dropping alcohol underneath. This technique works for every model of iPad, including bonded screens like those on the Pro and Air versions. And once you try this method, you'll quit any other ways that you've used before. Anyway, once the iPad's opened up, remove the four screws in each corner of the LCD. The top two screws are hidden under some black tape. Just use tweezers to peel the tape back, then unscrew. Lift out the LCD from the top, being aware of the flex cable in the bottom right of the display. And now we're into the guts of the device. Unscrew the single screw securing the battery connector and add a couple of drops of isopropyl alcohol either side of the connector. Then take an opening pick and slide it under the logic board and isolates power to the device. Remove the three screws holding down the LCD and digitizer connectors, then take the shield away. Disconnect the LCD first, then lift it away from the iPad and store it safely. Now disconnect the two digitizer flexors, then moving onto the home button flex, lift the little lever on the ZIF connector and carefully pull the flex away. Lift up the rubber spacing block and peel away the flex from the chassis to fully release it. Now remove the digitizer away from the iPad. Looking at this charging port, I can see straight away that all the screws in the area are loose. So first take a Phillips screwdriver and tighten them up really good. Now I'll take a closer look at this under the microscope and using this little BGA scraping tool, remove the overfill from the back of the port. You can see here that there's the absolute minimum amount of solder that's been put on these. And this is the real reason why these charging ports fail so often. Basically, every time the cable is inserted and removed, it puts pressure on these solder joints, causing micro fractures and intermittent charging issues, just like the issues with this iPad. To fix it, we're just gonna totally cover each pad with some very good solder and reinforce those joints. Just add some flux to help the solder flow, then add a blob of solder to each individual pin on the back of the lightning connector. With the solder applied, I now take some of this UV curing resin and generously overfill the area, then cure it with a UV lamp. This will further reinforce the area and leave a really tidy job. All that remains to do now is to test the charging function. So go ahead and loosely reassemble the iPad. Don't worry about the screws or adhesive just yet. This is just for testing. Connect the LCD, digitizer and home button. Fold the iPad back together, then connect your lightning cable. At this point, I can feel that this is no longer loose and there's very little movement even when I wiggle it. The Apple logo coming on means that it's recognized the cable being plugged in and has prompted the device to boot. Now, even when I wiggle the cable around, it isn't coming off charge. And when I plug the cable into the ammeter, it jumps straight up to the 2.1 amp draw that I would expect. I hope this video has been useful for you and helped you resolve your iPad charging issues. Thank you for watching and see you next time.